Welcome to Take a Seat, the channel dedicated to telling the stories of extraordinary people and fascinating periods in history. This video is a bit different from the first two, we won't be looking at a person in the Blitz but a hero in the music world. A quick but big thank you to Lisa who recommended this one to me, I thoroughly enjoyed researching into and making this. Oh, oh, yes. oh, it rains. Today, we're diving into the brilliant story of Sister Rosetta Tharp, the original Soul Sister. Tharp donned the stage, rocking gospel music with an electric guitar, growing popularity across the United States and Europe, influencing stars such as Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash. Early Life On the 20th of March 1915, Rosetta Atkins was born in Cotton Plant, Arkansas. Her mother, Katie Harper, was a singer and mandolin player and deaconess missionary at the Church of God in Christ. Her father, Willis Atkins, is also believed to be a singer, but not much is known of him as he wasn't really in the picture. The Church of God in Christ encouraged rhythmic musical expression. Founded by Charles Harrison Mason, he wanted women to sing and teach. Through the culture of fast-paced musical prayer, Tharp was spurred on by her mother to sing and play guitar. At the age of six, in 1921, the two were regular performers in an evangelical troupe, with the young Rosetta playing under the name Little Rosetta Newbin. Both would play in part sermon, part gospel concerts across the south of the US, being remarked as a singing and guitar playing miracle. Katie and Rosetta settled in Chicago, Illinois in the mid-1920s and would perform at the Church of God in Christ Robert Temple while sometimes travelling the country church conventions. Through constant appearances and of course outstanding musical shows, Rosetta's fame grew, casted as a musical prodigy in a time where distinguished black female artists were rarely known, notwithstanding an era of legal racism and sexism. Rosetta married in 1934 to Thomas Thorpe, meeting at the Church of God in Christ where he was a preacher. Thomas accompanied Rosetta and her mother Katie on a lot of their tours, but the marriage wouldn't last, ending only a few years later. This is, however, when the stage name Sister Rosetta Tharp was adopted using a variation of Thorpe as her surname. Although marrying multiple times, Rosetta would stick with this name for the rest of her life. Tharp and her mother would move to New York City in 1938 after she left Thomas. Music career It wasn't long after the move to New York the gospel rocker would record for the first time. On the 31st of October 1938, Tharp with Lucky Melinda's Jazz Orchestra recorded four sides for Decca Records, Rock Me, That's All, My Man and I and The Lonesome Road. All these songs are linked in the description below. These were instant hits and Sister Rosetta Tharp became the first commercially successful gospel recording artist. The song Rock Me is thought to have inspired rock and roll artists Elvis Presley and Jerry Lewis, giving her the, however disregarded until recently, appropriate title Godmother of Rock and Roll. Despite huge success, conservative churchgoers were dismayed at Tharp's rock and roll gospel music, but Moore loved her with one critic, Maury Orendecker, stated on Rock Me, it's Sister Rosetta Tharp for the rock and roll spiritual singing. Tharp's popularity and fame would only grow, playing with the white singing group The Jordanaires and appearing with the notorious scat artist Cab Calloway at Harlem's Cotton Club. The gospel rhythmic music was seldom heard in nightclubs and although favoured by a lot, the gospel acts amid showgirls not showing much started a rift between Tharp and the gospel community. It wasn't simply the mixture of religious music and rhythm and blues however, Rosetta was a hugely popular black female artist and that in itself was enough to turn heads. Still. Her performances were golden and Rosetta Tharp demonstrated her guitar skills at the Apollo and her Strange Things Happening Every Day was the first gospel song to appear in the Harlem Hit Parade in the Billboard magazine. 
This hit was called the first rock and roll record, meaning the founder was not Presley, Cash, Richard, it was the powerful black queer woman from Arkansas. Marie Knight, an R&B singer and also a Church of God in Christ member, performed at a Mahalia Jackson concert at the Golden Gate Auditorium in 1946. Rosetta saw Marie sing and was taken aback, so much so that two weeks later, Marie was asked to join a tour on her doorstep by Rosetta. Both toured the gospel circuit and recorded hit songs Above My Head and Didn't It Rain, but by 1949, the duo's popularity began to wane and they would begin performances as solo artists. Queerness and Relationships It's important to understand that this was a time of discrimination against black people, women and those in the LGBTQ community and in most American Christianity, homosexuality was seen as a sin higher than most. Because of this, it is believed that Rosetta kept her bisexuality from the public as she would have been treated much worse than, say, a gay man in the gospel circuit. Biographer of Tharp, Gail F. Wold, interviewed Marie Knight, who denied any sexual relationship with Tharp, and both Knight and Tharp did not welcome rumours that started the rounds, that they were anything more than friends and musical partners not just due to the discrimination faced, but also because of their legitimacy of being religious artists would come under question. Still, it's safe to say that they had a loving relationship, platonic or not. Knight would help Tharp with her finances and ward off men when their attention was unwanted and at the very end would help with funeral arrangements when Tharp passed away. It's not to say that there weren't open lesbian and bisexual women in the black gospel community. From Wold on Clara Ward, a gospel singer, in her as told to autobiography, Willa Ward Royster, Clara's sister, writes that Clara revealed to her that she had engaged in a clandestine affair with a female gospel performer. Rosetta did not talk about her sexuality publicly, as with most in the gospel circuit. Some such as Barney Parks, a founder of the Dixie Hummingbirds, did remark, however, that her and Marie Knight were intimate. Wald continues. Speaking anonymously, one of Rosetta's closest friends states, albeit with palpable discomfort, that Rosetta had female as well as male lovers. Gospel scholar Tony Helbert, who came to know Rosetta in the 1960s, recalls times when she would comment on the attractiveness of women in her audiences. Of her sexuality, he says, Rosetta belonged to the whosoever will church, as in, whosoever will let him or her come. Tharp married again. Her third marriage in 1951 was with Russell Mansom, who was her manager. They had approximately 25,000 paying customers to their wedding in Washington, D.C. Later career. As a trailblazer, it is unsurprising but still astonishing that Rosetta in 1952 is likely to have recorded the first interracial duet with Red Foley with the song Have a Little Talk with Jesus. Four years later, in 1956, Tharp and Quartet, the harmonising four, recorded the album Gospel Train and in 1957 toured in the UK. Rosetta also toured Europe in 1964 with the Blues and Gospel Caravan where towards the end they visited the UK again in a rainy Manchester train station at Wilbraham Road. Legacy Tharp had a stroke in 1970 and as a result of complications from diabetes had to have one of her legs amputated. Three years later, after another stroke, Rosetta passed away on the 9th of October 1973 and is now at rest at Northwood Cemetery in Philadelphia. Sister Rosetta Tharp, a black bisexual woman, rocks the world with her legendary guitar-driven gospel performances. She is said to have influenced Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis, Red Foley, Etta James, Bonnie Raitt, Ruth Brown, Isaac Hayes, and many, many more. Yet, comparing their notoriety and fame, Tharp is little known despite seen as the founder and godmother of rock and roll. 
Fortunately, the resurgence of her work led to the posthumous induction into the Blues Hall of Fame in 2007 and then in 2018, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In 2017, National Public Radio wrote about the artist's career and concluded with these comments. Tharp was a gospel singer at heart who became a celebrity by forging a new path musically through her unforgettable voice and gospel swing crossover style. Tharp influenced a generation of musicians. She was and is an unmatched artist. Thanks for taking a seat. Whether you're with me on YouTube or through the podcast, please consider liking and subscribing and maybe leave a comment with ideas on who you would like to hear about and what your thoughts are of the video. See description for links to sources and resources to learn more about this topic and for more content, check out the channel where I hope to see you again very soon.